I have been making videos about GameStop for the past 17 months, but I think this is the most important one. Maybe this is the most important video of my channel ever. Today we are going to see why I invested in GameStop in the first place since September 2019. How did I discover that there would be a short squeeze? Why did I keep buying GameStop? And eventually I took profits on GameStop. Why did I do that? And we will also need to answer the question what to do next? Should I buy more GameStop? Because now the price is falling. As you can see my total profits on GameStop are 3300%. I don't know anybody else who made much more profits than that percentage wise. If you know someone please let me know. But there are people on Wall Street bets who are making more money on options. But now the stock price is falling. I don't know if actually this will be realized profit. But as far as realized profits are concerned, I think I'm the single person in the world who makes the more profit on GameStop. I was able to buy GameStop at $3 and sold at $420.69. If you have a calculator right now, you're calculating, you will see that the, the profits are should have been 11,000%. So why is it? only 3,300%. It's because I did not sell everything at 420. I sold gradually. I started selling at $58 a share. And I also did not buy everything at free. I had some shares which I bought at $6, but my average buying price was $4.64. Before we talk about this great story, please make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ishvar. I am a popular investor in Itoro where I manage assets for over 900 people, now 1.3 million US dollars in assets under management. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the coming videos. The real hero of this story is not me. It's not some guy on Wall Street Bets. It's Michael Burry. Because he was the person who wrote that letter that made the board of GameStop buy back shares. They bought back 35% of shares. In August 2019, Michael Burry sent that letter asking them to buy back shares because they had a good balance sheet. They had more cash than debt and the shares were really cheap. So it made sense then to buy back shares. Eventually, they were going to profit from the next console cycle. So that was the point made by Michael Burry. Now, in hindsight, when you look at that, you can see that what Michael Burry did was make them lower the number of shares outstanding. Because before that letter, about 50% of the shares outstanding were short. But after that letter, it became to 80%. So Michael Burry may be the main reason why today we have a short squeeze, asking them to buy back shares. But at the time, of course, Michael Burry did not talk about the short squeeze. I read his letter, I made some analysis of GameStop, my own analysis, and I liked the company. I understood that Michael Burry has a great point. This is a cigar butt stock. What do I mean by cigar butt? It means that this is a stock which is so cheap today that the market is undervaluing. Maybe it is a failing business, but there is still money to be made on it. On GameStop, the main catalyst was that there would have been a new console cycle. With a new console cycle, the sales of GameStop were going to go up, the free cash flow of GameStop were going to go up, and consequently, the stock price of the company would go up. If you look at the income statement, you would see that the GameStop was losing money, but that's because of impairment of goodwill. But when you look at the cash flow, GameStop is losing money, but not that much. So in 2020, it was expected that it would be a better year for GameStop, and at the price that it was, it was really cheap. It was a sicker bus stock. There was some money to be made on GameStop. A few months after buying GameStop, the company was now even cheaper. When I started buying, it was about $6 a share, then $4, it came lower and lower until $3 a share. I began to realize something. I was just playing with the numbers and I saw that 86% of shares outstanding are short and more than 100% of float was short. How did I exactly come to that? I don't remember. Maybe I was just saying the liquidity. Maybe that's what I was trying to find out. How much liquid are the shares? Because there's high insider ownership. I knew that uh, they bought back shares. So how much shares are actually liquid? What is the float? I was maybe most probably trying to find that out. And I saw that there's so many shares are standing short. And I understood something that most of these shares are being counted more than once. In other words, there is naked short selling. They are shorting shares which do not even exist. And this could lead to a very bad consequence called a short squeeze. If really we are going to have more free cash flow in the next console cycle, people are going to buy the stock price of GameStop because it is cyclical. The stock price goes up. It means the short sellers are going to lose money. They have to cover 
causing the short squeeze. We are not going to go into details today. What's the short squeeze? You know about it. So I wrote an article about the short squeeze, the GameStop short squeeze on the 12th of February 2020. And then after a few weeks, I made a video about that. I was not the first person who found out about the short squeeze. Michael Burry most probably did, but he did not tell it to anyone. And on Wall Street Bets, there is uh, Roaring Kitty. I think he found out about it uh, earlier than me. But I always considered the short squeeze as a bonus. What I was focusing on is that GameStop at $3 a share was a deep value stock. You see that person who discovered the short squeeze independent of me, he's a deep value investor. That's his name on Wall Street, there is the F word in middle, but this, that's his name. He's a deep value investor, he understood what was happening. If you read the letters of Warren Buffett during his partnership from age 26 to 40, these letters are much better than Berkshire Hathaway letters. You will see then he was a deep value investor, he was buying cigar butt stocks. Sometimes he was not giving us the name of the companies, but he was making 50%, 70% a year on these types of deals. And I'm sure that a 26-year-old Buffett with 1 million US dollars in asset under management would have bought GameStop. I'm sure about that. He would have seen what was happening. It's only later when he met Charlie Munger, when he became CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, that he changed his strategy a little. He's still a value investor, but not a deep value investor. He doesn't buy cigar but anymore. Sometimes he still does some arbitrage. But in the past, he was a pure value, deep value investor. So what did I do when I saw that short squeeze? It's another catalyst for me and I began to buy more shares of the company. It was 60% down from my initial purchase. But I bought more because I believe that it's not just because of the short squeeze. Like I said, it's just a bonus. It was so cheap. It was a deep value stock. And the short squeeze was inevitable, even without Wall Street bets. Because just imagine those short sellers. GameStop was not going bankrupt. The short sellers, they wanted the company to go bankrupt. It would not have happened because it was it had more cash than debt and the stock price was cheaper than the cash. So they could buy back the whole company. The company was not going bankrupt. It was nowhere near bankruptcy. And we had this uh, new console cycle. So at some point, the short sellers would realize that this company is not going bankrupt. So instead of making 100% profits, maybe we can take 95% profits and one hedge fund shorting GameStop buys back the shares, the shares goes up, another hedge fund sees this, they also buy. So the hedge funds who were shorting GameStop themselves, they would have caused the short squeeze. And then the speculators enter the game and make the short squeeze even worse. This is what I was expecting, that the short sellers themselves, they were going to cause a short squeeze. The short squeeze was inevitable. I did not know that it would happen in just a couple of days. I thought maybe it could be just like Red Hat to happen over a long period of time. This is still possible today. I will talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, we had the same situation like with Volkswagen Group. It happened just in a couple of days. So the stock price eventually reached a bottom of about $2. Then it went up a little. We had that proxy fight. We won't go into details. We had that uh, Microsoft deal. Not important for the time being. Today we are going to talk about uh, the short script. That's what's more important. You can watch videos, I talk about that. I have made analysis on my research partnership too. Then we had the next big event about GameStop. Ryan Cohen investing in GameStop. Ryan Cohen saw the value in GameStop. I don't know if he saw the short squeeze, but he saw the value in GameStop. So this is one very important point here. If you are investing in a company because you see the value, most probably someone richer than you, smarter than you, is going to see the value and also invest in the company. It's going to happen. So in our case, in my case, it's Ryan Cohen who did it. The stock became popular again. People started talking about it. And then on Wall Street bets, it became the most popular stock. Everybody now was talking about it. And they decided, they saw that the, that guy who predicted the short squeeze, they saw his post, and they decided that they will trigger the short squeeze by buying the shares of GameStop. The short squeeze, like I said, would have happened without Wall Street bets. Because of the short sellers themselves, speculators always existed. The tulip mania was not caused by Wall Street bets, so it would have happened. But those people, when they coordinated to buy shares of GameStop, I don't know if this is legal, but they did it. Hedge funds sometimes do it, so they did it. They tried to send the price of GameStop higher. And it's not just Wall Street bets anymore. When CNBC reports about this, when Financial Times reports about this, the Wall Street Journal reports about this, other people are going to buy the shares of GameStop. So even though the Wall Street bets may have triggered, may have been the second trigger of the short squeeze, the initial trigger, that's Michael Burry. The second trigger, it's Wall Street bets. 
But most of those people who bought GameStop after that were not on Wall Street bet. It's people watching CNBC. And then the big hedge funds, they also see what's happening and they put billions of dollars in GameStop. It would be interesting to know which hedge funds were buying GameStop, which hedge funds actually caused the short squeeze. I don't believe that 3 million people on Reddit caused a short squeeze like that. 2 million people don't have 20 billion US dollars to invest in GameStop. They are big players involved in that. Another thing which I got wrong about GameStop was that I thought that the SEC would intervene in case there is a short squeeze in order to protect the short sellers. Maybe the SEC would force GameStop to issue shares. But this is not what happened. It's not the SEC which intervened, but the broker themselves, the market makers. They will say that they were trying to protect themselves. I know there are conspiracy theories that uh, because Citadel is a big investor in Melvin Capital who was shorting GameStop and Citadel also is the largest customer of Robin Hood. I'm not going to go there. What's important to understand is that things got out of control. And it was important for me to know when to leave. It was like the French Revolution. In the beginning, everything seems right. We are going to have a republic. Got the head of the king, okay? Then they started getting everybody's head. By the end of the day, even the people who started the revolution, Robespierre, Danto, they lost their head. But who was the actual winner from the French Revolution? It was Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte. What did he do? He started as someone faithful to the Republic, fighting for the Republic. But when he saw that the Republic was dying, everything was out of control, he just switched side. He became emperor himself. So in some way, it's like the Republic did not happen. So this is how you need to act as an investor. It's not because you're part of a rebellion or something, because you're going to die like this. If you try to be part of a rebellion against Wall Street, you're going to die. Not literally die, but you're going to lose a lot of money. People bought GameStop at $400. They are losing a lot of money today. This is not how you win on Wall Street. Now those people who are trying to buy silver in order to corner the market, they think they will take down JP Morgan, the largest bank in America. And it's not just that you cannot fight Wall Street, it's also because it is affecting real people. When you take down a hedge fund, when you bankrupt a hedge fund, much of the money of hedge funds come from pensions. So when you're actually bankrupting a hedge fund, you're bankrupting all people. When you, of course, they run on a bank. It's people like you and me who deposit money in that bank. So it's these people who are going to lose money. We all know what happened to Lehman Brothers. It's not the bankers who affected. And Lehman Brothers was an investment bank. If you think it will affect JP Morgan Chase and that won't affect the whole world economy, I don't know in which world you're living. So I saw that things were out of control. People were talking about GameStop at $1,000 a share, $5,000 a share, $10,000 a share. So at $10,000 a share, GameStop would be a trillion dollar company. I don't see this possible. Where do you think that some people, some speculators will have that much money? Speculators, they have money, but not that much money. Most of the money are still in the hedge funds. Most of them don't speculate. The retail investor, they lose money in the market. Most retail investors lose money in the market. You will see that the average market returns is 10%, hedge funds make 8%, but retail investors make only 2%. So even though the hedge funds fail to be the market, they are still better than the retail investors. You need to be a small retail investor here. It's not Wall Street versus Main Street. It's not retail investors versus the hedge funds. It's smart investors, intelligent investors versus stupid speculators. And you need to be on the side of the small, intelligent investors. I say that the intrinsic value of GameStop was about $50 a share in the bull case. It's because we don't have a plan yet from Ryan Cohen. If he has a plan, maybe then uh, it can go to $100 a share, the intrinsic value. But so far, with the correct fundamentals we have, it's $50 a share. So at $58 a share, I started taking profits. The main reason was that it reached 40% of my portfolio. I have this rule. A stock reaches 40% of my portfolio, I take profit. This comes from one of the letters of Warren Buffett during his partnership. So gradually, I took even more and more profits. And it's not just for me, it's for my copy years. Because you need to understand that uh, if I lose money, it's not just my money that I'm losing. I'm losing hundreds of thousands of dollars for my copy years. And I cannot risk that. What I did was to take 10 times the original purchase of GameStop in profit. 
So even in the worst case scenario, even if GameStop went to zero, I knew that I have made 10 times the money. It would be my best investments ever. It would be 10 bucks at least. So then I let it run a little because I knew that this short squeeze would not end that quickly. So I let it run a little to see how high it will go. And then when it reached $420, I decided to take everything in profit. The main reason is because now Robinhood was limiting trading. I know that the, those Wall Street bets, if they see this happening, they will move to another stock. They move to AMC first, then there were limits on AMC. Now they are moving to silver. This is how speculators think. So I took profits. I did not take everything at 420. There were still a few shares left and I eventually took uh, most of them up around 320. So that's how 17 months of holding GameStop ends with 3,300% in profits. Now the price is falling down again. The short percentage is about 50%. It is possible that the stock price of GameStop will keep going down as the speculators take profit. They move to another thing because these are speculators. And there are some speculators who bought at $400. Some of them mortgaged their house to buy at $400. Unfortunately, they are going to lose money. They will need to cover. So the stock price of GameStop I believe it's going down from here. Now, if it reaches the right price, maybe I'm going to buy back in because I still believe in the company. This company is not the next blockbuster. I hope now GameStop takes advantage of that to issue more shares. This is an opportunity to issue more shares, to issue shares to raise capital. I'm still waiting for what Ryan Cohen is going to do next. What's the next plan? Maybe he's going to be chairman. So if GameStop reaches the right price, I'm not going to tell you this number exactly today. I'm saying I'm still looking at the situation. I'm going to buy GameStop again. Hopefully we'll have another short squeeze. And this time it will be more like with our edge. It will be a long one, a long term one. And uh, this will be a good long term investment. But for the time being, holding GameStop is a bad idea. Buying GameStop is a bad idea. Selling game, GameStop, it's, if you still own it, I believe it's a good idea. So let me know in the comments uh, your story about GameStop. How much money, what's the profits you made on GameStop? If you want to tell me the exact profits in dollars, you can tell me. I won't tell anyone. Oh, you're actually sharing it with anyone. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please watch these two videos if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.